My entire trip to the California desert was planned around this astrophotography trip. I really, really wanted to try my hand at star trails. I have taken astrophotography photos before, not a lot, but I've never actually done a long exposure with star trails. We're here at Juniper Flats in Joshua Tree National Park, and we are here to do sunset and astrophotography. I can't wait. There's been incredible landscape here. It's like an alien planet. There's rocks everywhere and Joshua trees. It's just stunning. Now, it may be hard for us to do a lot of video as the sun goes down and as we're busy learning and having a great time, but I'm going to uh, see if I can bring you along anyway. And uh, if not, you got my photos and I'll tell you how it went, okay? The desert is an incredible location at night. We were out in this broad field with beautiful Joshua trees around and just underneath this incredible canopy of stars that just seemed to be infinitely deep and went on forever and ever. The experience of just standing there under such beauty was incredibly inspiring. When we started our evening, we had a moon high in the sky and the moon actually makes a huge difference to your foreground and the amount of light that you have when you're doing astrophotography. The moon is much, much brighter than we realize. So for the first part of the trip, I actually concentrated on taking some images of the moon. I loved the way that it would cause those Joshua trees to cast shadows on the landscape. If I wanted to get the moon in its details, meaning the craters and the shape and all of that, you would have to take two exposures and then combine the images afterwards. However, I didn't want to do that. And this, and this night, I just wanted to see that glowing moon over the landscape, almost like a nighttime sun. And it was just, it was just so peaceful and so beautiful. Throughout the night, the moon got lower and lower. And then as it set below the horizon, the stars really began to pop. And the Milky Way started to rise. What an, an incredible place. It was just, it was so wide open and beautiful. And so the Milky Way just right across the sky, it, it spread out, it was expansive and just beautiful. And yes, you could see it with the naked eye. You could just, every star was out, this blanket of stars in the Milky Way. It was just this gorgeous, white, bright band going across the night sky. It was just awesome.
We had a group of about 10 to 20 of us, each with our own cameras and tripods and goals for the evening. And it was, even though it was a big space, it was sometimes difficult to not get in one another's way. I set myself up for a 45 minute exposure doing star trails and I was a little bit nervous. At about the halfway mark, about 20 minutes in, somebody decided to light up a tree. I had to shout across the way, would you mind turning that off? <laughs> and I felt really bad because they obviously had plans for their own uh, photography, including some light painting. They were nice enough to turn it off and I managed to get the end of my exposure. one part of Joshua Tree National Park that had a lot of Joshua trees, but there are other parts of the park that have incredible rock formations all around. The rocks look almost like another world. They make you feel like you're in another place, maybe another time. And like anything can happen, it sparks your imagination. It brings the past and the future and your hopes and your dreams and everything that's all rushing in together. And it just, oh, you can stand there and just be completely awe-inspired. Considering that it was very difficult even to see the compositions because the, the landscape was so dark, I was pretty happy with the way it turned out and I was also happy with what I learned about doing them. So shooting astrophotography is actually only half the battle. The other half of the way that your image turns out is definitely done in post-processing. All images are shot with your lens wide open. And by that, I mean you're going to have it at the lowest f-stop possible, the widest aperture. So for my camera, that was f2.8. You're also going to take a minute and determine by looking through the lens uh, at the spots and determining exactly which is the sharpest point for focus. And then once you capture that, uh, what we did on the trip is with a little bit of black masking tape, we taped our lens in place so that we had that sweet spot in the focus. Um, that was our instructor's word. And, and it wasn't going to move by accident. The other thing we did with the black tape was we covered up the indicator light on the front of the camera that flashes whenever you're looking for focus or uh, doing a timed shot, that kind of thing. So no light, no problems with uh, exposing the foreground in a way that you don't want. So ISO and shutter speed for astrophotography ISO is usually pretty high and that's the thing that you need to balance most with astrophotography is the uh, noise versus the ISO. You need a high enough ISO that you're going to be capturing all the details that you want and get those beautiful bright stars, your Milky Way, but you also don't want it so high that you have a really, really grainy picture. In fact, with lots of grain and astro photos, you can sometimes find that the grain actually looks like stars too. 
and you don't want that. You want it to look as natural as possible. And it's definitely a balancing act. My ISO was often at um, 1600 to 3200. And I found that at 1600, the pictures were a little bit underexposed. And I moved up to 3200 and it was a little bit better, much easier to work with in post-processing too. Exposure time. There is a rule called the 500 rule and just check the description. I will include a little bit of information there. And my exposures were about 20 seconds long. White balance is a huge, huge thing. It has a very big effect on the way that your images turn out. You can put the white balance to something very, very blue and you have a beautiful blue scene, blue night sky, or you can leave it a little bit more warm and have uh, different tones and colors. I've seen night sky images that have edited to be uh, green and some that are very, very dark blue, some that are just, you know, those Milky Way images where they all have like that, um, the varied tones and colors throughout. Those are just gorgeous. And white balance has a lot to do with it. When you're doing night sky photography, I really encourage you just to play around with your white balance and see what might be pleasing to you. Maybe do a few different ones. You'll notice with my images that I have processed my images in a lot of different ways. And so I have a lot of very different looking photos from and the, the standpoint of color and so on. And uh, yeah, it was just fun. One night of Astro might as well just go for it and see what kind of creative uh, things you can come up with. Thank you so much for coming along with me guys to California, to the desert, to the mountains in the desert, astrophotography to Pioneer Town. It was an incredible trip and I want to thank Kara for coming along with me because we had a fantastic time and it's something that I will never forget. Now coming up soon, I have your Instagram images and I have some reviews for you and more trips out and about. During the summer, I'm going to try to keep up with two uh, videos a week, but it may sometimes only be one. It's just, it's a really busy time. Everybody's home. And anyway, thank you so much for coming along and I can't wait to see you soon. Bye guys.